This is the easiest CNC inlay you'll ever see. Everything you see here was made using our inlay starter set. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it. So in this video, I'll be walking you step by step on exactly how to make this design right here. This starter set includes everything you'll need to do an inlay. This starter kit is different than our standard inlay kit as it is smaller and comes in at a much lower price point. It includes the plug, the base, a wire brush, four rubber feet, 3.4 ounces of mineral oil, three free digital files, the commercial license to sell the inlays if you so choose, and this video walking you through step-by-step step exactly how to use the kit so you can make an inlay. Now, in order to make this 3D Illusion cutting board right here, we are going to have to use the V-card method of inlaying. And I did a full video over this that is really in depth and really well put together. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. For today, you don't even really have to know this because you get the digital file that already has all of this stuff done for you. Just know you're going to have to use a V-bit of some sort. And in today's video, we'll be using the V-carve inlay set from CIC Workshop. It is a 30 degree V-bit and a 3 16 upcut bit. So that's what the digital file is going to be modeled after. So when we're using the CNC today, we will be running everything off of a center origin. And what makes this one in particular more difficult than the others is because the amount of area you have to use clamps. So if you notice on this one, I have the clamps at the very ends of the corners and that bit is not going to go out and hit it. Now I am going to do the female first, which means I'm going to be using that 3 16 clearing out bit. I like to do the bases first on V-carve inlays just because this one's a lot easier to get that quick win on, kind of gets me going, and then we'll come back with that male plug right there. I'm gonna put this 3 16 up cut in, and then let's go program it. This is the digital file you'll receive whenever you purchase the kit. It has a step-by-step -step instructions and also the bits we used at the top, and we will have it in Carbite Create as well. Step one is to carve out the base, and so we'll just click this, center it with the project, and then use our toolpath number one. And what that's going to do is going to have a flat depth of a quarter inch using that 3 16 upcut bit with a slight ramp. Here are my settings for the V bit. And this final pass step over is very important to have at 2%, 2% or less. If it's any higher, it's going to have too many fuzzies whenever that V bit runs. And then we're using that 3 16 upcut at these feeds and speeds right here. And we'll come in first with that 3 16 bit, clearing out everything right there. And then we'll follow it up with that 30 degree V bit, just like that. 3 16 up cut in. Let's start clearing out some chips. All right, so as this 3 16 upcut comes forward, I'm gonna put that 30 degree V-bit in and you always wanna make sure you retouch off, right? Redo your Z height because you do have a different bit in. Since I'm using the Shape Oko, it automatically touches it off for me and so I don't have to re-Z height, so that's not gonna be shown. Now before we run that 30 degree V-bit, keep in mind that this is the most difficult design. Any of the other designs, if you want to do them, is the exact same process, right? 3 16 up cut, clearing out, then put your 30 degree V-bit in, then put your male part, and then do whatever the heck I'm gonna show you later on in this video. Exact same process, just a little different design. <laughs> Like this particular 30 degree V-bit is because it's solid carbide and it has three flutes and so it can actually do a quarter inch depth of pass on this end grain and just not stop and so even though you can use any degree of V-bit 60 90 30 I like 30 because it's deeper and then this particular 30 degree V-bit because it is solid carbide and tends to do a lot better job on these deeper inlays Yeah. 
So now that the 30 degree V bit is done, there is going to be a little bit of fuzzies at the bottom and you do want to get those cleaned up. That's where that wire brush comes in handy. Now remember, the smaller of the final pass step over you have on this female part, you know, the cleaner that bottom's gonna be. And so now just take your brush, whether it's now or when this male part is running and get everything cleaned out. All right, female version is done. Now we have the male plug down. The main thing on the male plug is make sure you're doing your Z height correctly and make sure it's not warped. So our kits will come in shrink wrap, but if there's a little bit of a warp, right? You don't want the warp to be this way. You want it to be this way. That way you can hold down those corners and everything is nice and flat. So we're first gonna do that 3 16 up cut, then put that 30 degree V-bit in. And in between those change outs, we are going to make sure that this isn't popping up because once again, there's gonna be more surface area and a better or a more likelihood of warping. If it is, we're gonna put an extra clamp right there and right there to really hold everything down. So with that being said, let me show you how we program this, and then we'll get to cutting. The next thing we'll do is get this base out of the way and select the male plug vector. It looks similar, but it is a mirrored version of the base. Then we'll select the next tool path, which is going to have a start depth of 0.23 inches and a flat depth of 0.1 inches. And whenever that runs, we're gonna do the pocket first with that 3 16th bit, followed up with that 30 degree V-bit. Now, since the start depth is 0.23 inches and the flat depth is 0.1, that pass is going to be 0.33 inches deep. And so if your CNC cannot handle that, what you want to do is you want to duplicate this tool path right here and then go in there and do an extra tool path with a 0.06 inch start depth and a 0.1 flat depth. And what that is going to do is going to lighten the load and so you're going to have pass one right there and then you'll come back with the normal pass that i have set up and then it will carve deeper just like that so if your cnc cannot handle it just simply duplicate it and do a 0.06 inch start depth Just got through running that up cut and two things happened. One, the clinch factor went through the roof whenever that tool path almost hit that clamp. So I'm gonna do the smart thing and put a clamp that's probably better or that is 100% better for the job. The other thing that happened is this did start to pop up just a little bit. Now on the clear out bit, it doesn't really matter, but before that V bit comes in there, you definitely wanna get all of that stuff held down now, would double-sided tape probably be a smart move for this? Yes. Did I use it? No. Can I take it off? Nope. So I gotta come back and I'm gonna come and put some clamps right here on this edge just to hold it. And I know for a fact that the bit is not going to hit it because I already ran that tool path there. 30 degree V bits in there, about to run it. But before I do, my videographer, Steven, was kind of going a little OCD on this because I have so many different clamps and different setups here. He's right. I do hate it. But that doesn't matter. It's okay. Unless you're OCD, then it probably matters. But it doesn't matter how ugly all of this looks. What matters is the job gets done and the CNC cuts. And that's what I'm all about. So let's run it, baby. All right, 30 degree V-bit just got done. Now, I am actually going to put that 3 16 bit in and actually cut this out. To cut out the male plug on the CNC, I'm not going to have this tool path in there because it is very simple. But what you want to do is cut the depth of your material 
take a profile toolpath and go inside the line, select that very outside border vector, and just cut with that 3 16th bit. Very simple here, nothing crazy, and that's going to give you space all around that inlay, even if you did inside the line. So whenever you're cleaning out that mail, there will be like some fuzzies right here at the bottom. Do not worry about them because what you have and what we're about to do is whenever we turn this over, it's going to fit in there like that. And we're going to have an, a tenth of an inch of a surface gap. So as long as there's not a tenth of an inch of fuzzies sticking up in the bottom, you're good. Now this is called the dry fit. And so once again, we're doing it exactly like this. And then we're going to have a 0 0.02 inch glue gap on the bottom. So as long as fuzzies don't stick up more than roughly a 32nd of an inch, you're good. And so this goes on there. If you can tell, there's about a 10th of an inch sticking up out of here. You can get your caliper and stick it on there and double check, but look at that. A nice, pretty fit. All right, now we're ready for the glue up. So. I just use some tight bond three and a little silicone brush, brush it in there, make sure you get all the spots and you cannot use too much. It'll always squeeze out because of the angle. All right, so once all the glue is in there, I like to do a test fit. And so I'll put it in there and I'll actually press it like this and then pull it out just to make sure everywhere got glue. And so it looks like right there needs a little bit more glue. Yeah, so I'm gonna go back and put a little bit more glue in that spot and that spot over there. And so it's always just important because you can't have too much glue in inlays, it'll all squeeze out. Okay. All right, now to clamp all this together, if you do have my inlay press, this is going to be a fantastic option if you have never heard of it. I did a full video on this inlay press. You can slap it together out of a two foot by two foot piece of wood. It's gonna press all this down. Or if you don't wanna do that and you wanna do it the old school way, just take a couple boards, sandwich this in between, make sure there's no glue on top right here and just clamp it up like so. But since I have a fancy smancy inlay press, I'm going to use it. So once you have it all in there, leave it clamped at least an hour, preferably overnight. Then tomorrow we'll come back, take it out, and I'll show you how to surface off the top. That way you have a nice clean surface and we'll finish out the board. All right, just took the board out of the press. It is now dry. If there's any warp to it, just let it sit another 24 hours and that warp will come out. The next thing we're gonna do is take that 3 16 upcut bit and actually surface off the top of this board. So let me show you how to clamp it down and then we'll get to surfacing. In order to hold this board down good, we can't have any clamps on this top side right here. And so we're gonna need to clamp it down in a variety of different ways. One way you can do it is put a corner piece down or some dog bones, whatever you wanna do kind of jam it, right? So you're gonna use some wedges and you're gonna drive these wedges right here and kind of jam it into the corner like this, right? And that's gonna wedge it. But I have these really cool little clamps right here that as you screw them down, this thing kind of extends. And so I'm gonna put these on all four sides and that's gonna hold the board without having any clamps on top. To surface off the top of the cutting board, we're gonna take that mail out of the way and take this rectangle right here. The rectangle is a half inch bigger than the current cutting board. And we're gonna actually take that pocket tool path. We're going to pocket down 0 0.01 inches. We're going to have a 90 degree raster with no profile pass. And we're gonna have a slight ramp. The reason for the 0 0.01 inches is because we're going to touch off on the top of the material. So here are my settings for the upcut bit. And all that's going to do is just go back and forth, nice and slow, chipping away at that male plug, and you'll end up with something beautiful like this. 
The board's held down. Now to surface this, I'm just making a rectangle that is half inch bigger than both of these dimensions. And then I'm going to pocket down 0 0.01 inches and do a 90 degree raster. That way it surfaces off this direction. All right, so whenever we're touching off, we just want to touch off on the top of the material itself because that pocket's only going down 0 0.01 inches. We know that if we touch off or hover right above the baseboard, it's not going to cut down too deep and it will take all of this inlay off right here. Now, if you do have other tools and equipment in your shop, definitely use that. But this is how to do it with that 3 16 upcut from that inlay bit set that you got. So let's touch it off right here and rip it. So once it's all surfaced, it should look like this. After you apply oil on it and sand it down, it will look like this. The cutting board oil is not labeled, so you can hand it to customers if you already have your own oil and the rubber feet look really nice on the back. So here are all the color combos. Here's one last look at them to see which one you want or if you want to do all six of them. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This is the inlay starter set by CSC Workshop. And as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.